Today I'd like to talk to you about Legionella. Legionella is a bacterium that was first identified by the Center for Disease Control, or CDC, back in 1976, following an outbreak of pneumonia-like symptoms of a number of attendees at an American Legion conference in Philadelphia. Since that time, the CDC has gone back and identified that, in fact, there were previous outbreaks, they just did not know what caused them, such as one in that same hotel in Philadelphia two years earlier, as well as going back as far as 1959 in Pontiac, Michigan, where an outbreak termed Pontiac fever was subsequently identified as being caused by Legionella. Today, both Legionnaire's disease, named after the American Legion Conference outbreak, and Pontiac fever are the two diseases that can be attributed to Legionella. Pontiac fever is more of an influenza-like symptoms, whereas the Legionnaire's disease has the pneumonia-like symptoms. The CDC estimates there are about between 8,000 and 18,000 cases of Legionnaire's disease and Pontiac fever every year. They also have indicated, or they, they have been tracking this since the year 2000, and since that time, as you can see in this chart, through 2016, the number of instances have increased by a factor of five. Now that doesn't necessarily mean the actual outbreaks are occurring at that much higher frequency. It may be also that people, doctors are identifying it more directly and, and not misdiagnosing it as pneumonia or something else. However, it's definitely increasing and definitely of concern to building supply or building water managers. Now, why is the building water supply a concern? Well, the Legionella bacterium is actually transmitted through inhalation of a water vapor where the bacterium is present. It's not transmitted through drinking the water or through eating food that's been prepared using the building water. It's inhalation. Specifically, it has to be inhalation through people who are immunocompromised. So this would typically be the elder, elderly or possibly people undergoing chemotherapy or something like that. So Legionella in and of itself for a lot of people is not a concern. However, for those that are more susceptible to it or immunocompromised, it can be a very significant or serious health risk and may lead to death. As a result, there have been a lot of work done in terms of identifying how to eliminate or eradicate Legionella from the building water supply. Now, as I mentioned, part of the, or the means of transmission is inhalation of a water vapor containing the Legionella bacteria. Where does this water vapor come from? In a lot of buildings, it can be from a variety of sources, misters, humidifiers, whirlpools and spas, um, evaporative coolers, also known as swamp coolers, or cooling towers. I think most people who have heard or in the news read about various Legionella outbreaks, and cooling towers are often the source of that Legionella. And this can be both open and closed loop cooling towers. Some people think incorrectly that a closed loop cooling tower will not contribute to this because the domestic water supply is closed off or segregated from the cooling tower. However, that's not the case. Now there have been a number of standards established to help address these systems, provide better design criteria. One of them, one of the earlier ones, was the ASHRAE Guide 12, which is now sort of still in existence, but there's a newer ASHRAE Standard 188, Legionellosis, Risk Management for Building Water Systems. And this has also just recently been updated. The 2018 version of the standard has been updated to have more requirements and more mandatory language so that it can be adopted into actual building code requirements. The CDC has also published a document on developing water management programs to help in reducing Legionella growth and spread in buildings. This is a guidance document, basically a, a means of implementing the ASHRAE standards or other national standards. These all follow the HACCP type of protocol, which is a hazard analysis and critical control point type of system evaluation. You evaluate the system, look at the hazards available, in this case Legionella, and critical control points where you can control that Legionella. The control points are where you would be applying, for example, a water treatment of some type. The typical water treatments would be hyper or superchlorination. This unfortunately has been shown in a number of studies to not be a very reliable technique for a number of reasons. The high concentration of chlorine does not necessarily penetrate the biofilm in the piping. Um, it can be costly and it is not very reliable as in terms of a day-to-day -day or ongoing um, method. The next one is chlorine dioxide. Chlorine dioxide is very effective at killing Legionella. Unfortunately, as a byproduct, it also creates chlorates and chlorites, and the combination of the three are regulated by the EPA. The EPA is also setting up standards by which, depending on the number of occupants in certain types of buildings, 
the building, if they are doing any on-site chemical treatment of the water system, can be held accountable for maintaining those EPA requirements in their own system. Monochloramine or chloramines have been found to be very effective. They, have, they maintain a residual in the water longer than either the free chlorine or the chlorine dioxide. They are very effective against Legionella. Unfortunately, in some other types of bacteria, they are not quite as effective. So you need to evaluate that in terms of how it's being used, possibly in other facilities similar to the one where you're considering implementing it. The next, I guess, chemical type of treatment is copper-silver ion generation. Copper-silver ions have also been found very effective against Legionella, and they do actually provide a, a longer term effect. So if the system goes down for some mechanical reason or something, the, the piping system will still continue to be effective against Legionella because of the presence of the copper ions over an extended period of time. So this does seem to show a lot of promise. However, as you may have seen in some of my earlier tech TV, we've talked about the combination of chlorine and copper can be fairly detrimental to plastic piping systems and specifically polypropylene. So that's something to look out for. There are also two additional types of treatment which are, I consider, non-chemical, the first of which is heat. Heat will, in fact, destroy Legionella, as you can see in the associated chart here, or that I'm showing here, and the temperature and the ex exposure time are directly related. So the higher the temperature, the shorter the exposure time. A number of facilities have incorporated options such as heating the water up to 160 Fahrenheit for a period of an hour each day, or running continuously at 140 degrees will also be an effective measure against Legionella. While both of these can be done properly, the concern is that you need to in increase that temperature throughout the system. So you need to have the water circulating as much as possible. This goes back to my earlier comments on the design of the system, some of the specialty fittings that allow you to reduce the dead legs or eliminate dead legs and continue keep that water circulating throughout the entire system. Another non-chemical means is the use of UV light. UV light works very well in terms of eradicating Legionella bacterium. It can also be very cost effective. There are a few downsides. It is a one pass system and it does not maintain a residual in the water. However, again, if the system is designed properly and operated properly, then the use of UV light seems to be very successful in a lot of case studies that I've reviewed and some studies that have been done in Europe and the United States. There's a ton of information out there, uh, websites such as legionella.org, OSHA, and CDC all publish a lot of good information. ASHRAE has some wonderful documents to help with that design, and I encourage you to seek those out. If you have specific questions related to treatment methods and the use of aquatherm piping, please contact aquatherm. Thank you.